Archimedes is draining his bathtub. Every two minutes that pass, seven gallons of water are drained. Which of the following functions can represent the number of gallons of water in the tub W as a function of the minutes that have passed T? So let's think about this visually. So let's plot the amount, the number of gallons of water we have. Let's put that in the vertical axis. That is a function of time. As time passes, we will lose water at a fixed rate. So this is our time axis right over here. So we're going to start with some initial volume of water in the tub. And they actually don't tell us what that initial volume of water is. But let's just call that, let's just call that W, capital W, sub zero. So this is just the initial volume of water. Initial, we're doing everything in gallons. So let's say the initial number of gallons. Initial number of gallons, or the number of gallons at time equals zero. This is t equals zero right over here. Then they tell us that every two minutes that pass, so this is going to, time is going to be given in minutes. In minutes, time is in minutes, and the w is in gallons, in gallons. So say every two minutes that pass, seven gallons of water are drained. So let's say two minutes pass from time equals zero. So that is one minute, so this is one minute, and this is two minutes right over here. So we have two minutes passing. And how much water is going to get drained? Well, they tell us seven gallons of water are drained. So we're going to, after two minutes, we're going to get to W naught minus seven. However much water we had before, we're going to have seven gallons less. W naught minus seven is where we go. And so if we were to plot the amount of gallons or the number of gallons we have as a function of time, it would look something like this. It would look like a line. It would look a line, look like a line that goes something like that. So one thing that we could ask ourselves is what is the rate of change of W with respect to T? What is the rate of change of our vertical axis with respect to our horizontal axis? And that's also known as the slope of our line. Well, the rate of change of our, so we could write that as the rate of change, this, 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 this delta symbol, this Greek letter, this triangle, is just shorthand for change in. So our change in W for a given change in, change in time. Well, we know that when time increases by two minutes, and time is in minutes, W decreases by seven gallons. So because it decreases, it's going down. And we see that this is a downward sloping line right over here. And we see it graphically right over here. When our change in time, when our change in time is positive two, our change in time is equal to positive two. Our change in our change in vol our change in volume. So this is this distance, which is the same thing as this distance right over here. Our change in the number of gallons is equal to negative seven. So this right over here is the slope of our line, or the rate of change of the number of gallons with respect to time. Now, we don't know the exact starting position or the exact W intercept, but we just called it W sub naught. So we could write a general equation here. We could say that the number of gallons, the number of gallons is equal to the initial gallons that we have, the initial gallons that we have, plus negative seven halves times time. Or we could just call this minus, minus seven over two, 7 over 2, that's just the negative 7 halves right over there, times time, times time. And this should make complete sense now. We have our, we have our, our vertical axis intercept, often called the y-intercept, but we're not calling the y-axis, the, the, this isn't called the y-axis anymore. We have our vertical at, uh, intercept, and we also have the slope of our line here. If you're familiar with slope-intercept form, we normally write y is equal to mx, plus b, where this is the slope and this is the y-intercept, we've written it the exact same way. We've said w is equal to negative 7 halves t plus w naught. I just swapped these two things around. And notice, this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So which of these match that pattern? Well, let's see. I should start with a, some positive number of gallons, and I'm subtracting 7 halves t. So the only one that matches this is this one right over here, is 50 is 50 minus 7 halves t. Now even if you didn't think anything about slopes and you were just looking at these choices here, you would say, well look, I should start with a certain number of gallons of water and then it should only decrease as, a number of, as the amount of time passes. 
This one wouldn't satisfy this. At time equals zero, I have no gallons here. Well, that doesn't meet the constraints here. I have a certain number of gallons here. So this doesn't make sense. Here, at time equals zero, I have 100 gallons. But then as time passes, that will only increase. So this is, you know, this is the, the faucets on here. It's not being drained, so that doesn't work. Here, I'm, once again, I'm starting with a certain number of gallons when time equals zero. And then as time passes, it's increasing my number of gallons. So once again, the faucet is on right over here. So once again, the only one where I'm starting with a certain number of gallons, and then as time passes, my number of gallons are reducing, because this is a negative value, is, the, is this choice right over here.